Hi, my name is David Platt, and I have the privilege of pastoring in Metro Washington, D.C., and I am so thankful for the opportunity to gather together with you from the other side of the world to encourage you as you gather together for prayer. I am so thankful for God's grace in you. I personally have been challenged and changed in my life in my leadership in the church by what God has done in and through you as the church, specifically in South Korea, to, to see a story where God has taken a peninsula, a Korean peninsula, where in 1900 there was less than 1% of the population that was Christian. To go from that picture to a hundred years later, when you had the turn of the 21st century over 10 million followers of Jesus in South Korea alone. <laughs> what a picture of God's grace and God's power and specifically to see how this has happened as a result of praying, a church rising every morning early to pray, a church gathering together on many nights all night long to pray. I remember the last time I was in South Korea, I was so challenged by praying with the church there that I came back to our church and I said, we've got to make some major changes. We need to start gathering together more to pray, to gather together all night to pray. And I have, we have seen in our church fruit for God's glory in so many ways as a result of gathering together to pray like we have seen and learned from you to pray. So I praise God for his grace in you and now for the privilege of encouraging you with God's word as you're gathered together. And so I was praying about how I might best encourage you, especially during these days as we are still walking through a global pandemic and all of the effects of that in our lives, families, and churches, and in the world. I prayed about how I might best encourage you, and the text from God's word that immediately came to my mind and heart was Revelation chapter five. So I wanna read the whole chapter, Revelation chapter five, verses one through 14, and I want to encourage you from it. Verse one says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. And then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb who was slain 
to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. There is so much in this passage of scripture, but in the few minutes I have to encourage you, I want to remind you based on God's word that this is the picture toward which all of history is headed. There is coming a day when people from every nation and tribe, and language and people will gather around the throne of God and will give worship to Jesus for his salvation. We see the same picture two chapters later in Revelation chapter seven, verse nine and 10. A great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, language, singing salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And the reason I want to encourage you from this passage of scripture is to remind you, one, that God is right now seated on the throne of the universe, on the throne of history, and he reigns as the sovereign Lord of all. Just as Jesus said when he rose from the grave and prepared to ascend into heaven, all authority in heaven and on earth belongs to him. And this is good news for us in a world affected by a pandemic, in a world where there's so much suffering in so many different ways, not just with a pandemic, but beyond a pandemic, to look up and see in a world that sometimes seems like it's out of control, God is in control. God is sovereign. And ultimately, COVID will not have the last word. Viruses and disease will not have the last word. Ultimately, sin and death will not have the last word. Ultimately, Jesus will have the last word. This is encouragement when we think about the world, and I hope it's encouragement when you think about your life. I obviously don't know what's going on in all of your lives, but God does. And I want to remind you that he is in control, that he holds your life in the palm of his hands. And for all who trust in him, he promises to provide you with everything you need. When you feel weak, he will be your strength. When you feel anxious, he will be your peace. When you don't know if you can go on, he will uphold you. Psalm 37, 24, with his righteous right hand. God promises to give you everything you need according to the glorious riches that are ours in Christ Jesus. You can trust in God even amidst hard days because you know he is on the throne. He is in control. And he is working all things together for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. And what is his purpose? Those God foreknew, he predestined. Romans 8, 29 says, to be conformed to the likeness of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. In other words, God's working all things together ultimately in our lives and in the world toward the day when we will be around his throne, all who've trusted in Jesus, and we will be glorified with him, enjoying him for all of eternity. So you and I have hope in this world to press on in hard days because we know where all of history is headed. Which leads to the other reason that Revelation chapter five came to my mind. Because the picture here is not just you and me, 
who know Jesus, having hope in him, as we think about this picture in heaven. But this good news, this hope we have in the gospel is for every tribe and language and people and nation in the world. For all the ethnic groups, Ponta Ta Ethne, Jesus told us to make disciples of all the nations, Ponta Ta Ethne, in Matthew chapter 28, and this is the fulfillment of that. All the ethnic groups, people groups of the world gathered around God's throne singing his praises yet today. In the world in which you and I live, there are approximately three billion people in approximately 7,000 people groups that are currently unreached by this gospel by the good news of the Savior who has died on a cross for sins, who's risen from the grave in victory over death. There are approximately three billion people in 7,000 people groups who have yet to hear this good news. And if they do not hear this good news, they will not be gathered around this throne on that day if they do not hear this good news in such a way that they believe in Jesus, then they will experience everlasting judgment for their sin, which means you and I have a responsibility in this day to make this hope of this gospel known to those people groups, to those three billion people, for all of us to live our lives to go as God leads us, to give of our resources, and to pray. Did you notice in Revelation chapter 5, the verse 8 talks about the prayers of the saints. Oh, as you gather together to pray, yes, pray for your lives and your families and your churches and your nation, but pray for all the nations. Pray for the spread of God's grace and the hallowing of God's name among all the peoples of the earth among the Pashtun of Afghanistan, among Yemeni Arabs, among Somalis, among all the different people groups in China, all the different people groups in India. Pray for the spread of the gospel among the Berbers of Morocco. Pray for the spread of the gospel among the peoples of the earth. And as you pray for them, in anticipation of this day, say to God, use my life, use my family, use our church. God, use Sarong Church for the spread of the gospel in South Korea and from South Korea to the ends of the earth. Pray toward that end and lay down your lives, your families, your church together to say, God, use us to make the good news of your ransom, your redemption known among every tribe and every people and every nation, no matter what that costs us. This is where all of history is headed, toward all the peoples of the earth singing the praises of Jesus. And you and I are called to live for that purpose. You and I are called to live and die for that purpose. And so as you gather together to pray, may the prayers of the saints, may your prayers be for the hallowing of Jesus' name among all the nations of the earth. And as you trust in God's sovereignty in your life, may you say to him right now, during these days in prayer, in a fresh way, God, Use my life, use my family, use our church to make this gospel known among all the nations of the earth. We live in a world of desperate, urgent need. And we have the gospel that is able to save people from every tribe and every tongue. So let's pray and surrender ourselves to him and see where he leads. The last picture that I have in my mind 
when I think about this prayer gathering that you're in based on Revelation chapter five is Acts chapter 13 when the church was worshiping and fasting and praying and the spirit of God moved, set apart Saul and Barnabas for the work to which I've called them. And a movement happened in Acts chapter 13 that would lead to the spread of the gospel throughout the known world. I pray that as strong church you gather together to pray during these days that God by his spirit would move in such a way that would lead to the spread of the gospel through you to places it has not yet gone as we anticipate the day when we will all gather around his throne from all of our languages and we will give our King, Jesus, the glory he is due. God, I pray that you would bless this gathering of your people in prayer to glorify your name among the nations. Hear the prayers of your saints. Lead them by your spirit to intercede for people who have not heard the gospel, people groups that have not been reached by the gospel. And I pray that you would raise up men and women and families to go and spread the gospel to them. We look forward to the day when we will gather around your throne and we will sing a new song, Worthy Are You, Jesus, to receive praise and glory and honor from all the nations of the earth. Help us to faithfully follow you wherever and however you lead to live and die in anticipation of this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.